Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the 1st of October, so it is time to do our October reset, to reflect on September, to review how I'm proceeding with my 2023 goals and how I did with my monthly goals in September and to check on my budget and the September budget, how it went down and what I spent my money on in September. And of course, the in and out balance for September. Then we are resetting and restarting for the month of October, starting fresh with new energy. So let's jump in and starting with the review of the goals. All right, so let's talk about the goals first. As always, let's review what I have done this month, uh, which monthly goals did I accomplish, I don't think I did very well, honestly, this month. Let's look at the health and wellness goals because these are the monthly goals. Go swimming once a month is my first one in the month of September. Well, I didn't go specifically to a pool for a swim, but I did swim during my holiday a couple of times in the sea. So does that count? Does that count? Uh, I'm not going to count it, I guess. Get a My Club subscription. This month, again, I continued to do My Clubs and I was taking yoga and dance classes. Actually, this month I didn't do any yoga, I think. I just did dance classes. And I did a sound healing meditation. Then reading, my reading routine. I'm supposed to read 25 days in one month and I set that goal at the end of July. Uh, as, I re as I was reviewing my goals and resetting for the second half of the year, uh, I changed it from reading every day to 25 days a month because I thought that was doable. And somehow, yet somehow, ever since I changed this goal, I am not able to reach it because this month I read 23 nights out of the 30 nights. And in the last month I read, I think, on 21 days. So... Still not able to check that box. Tracking habits is still going strong. I think this is the one habit that I really incorporated into my routine and I do it really every day of the year since January, 1st of January. Here is my little tracker. I do it at the moment on paper, but that might change in the future. I am considering to change up my system a little bit for the next year, but yeah, there is three more months to go from 2023. So it's a bit too early to talk about that. Anyhow, so as I mentioned, I read 23 days out of the 30 in September. Alcohol consumption was another one and which has a separate row for it in my goals list to not drink alcohol on more than three days in a month which was a very ambitious goal uh, this month i really fell off the bandwagon but already the previous month this month i went on a holiday so every day during that holiday i had one drink at least um, and there were some other days outside of my holiday week when i was drinking alcohol so overall i drank on 12 days out of the 30, which is a lot. It might be my annual high for a month of drinking alcohol. However, I have not drank in 10 days. So all of that happened in the first half of September. And then since the 22nd of September, I haven't been consuming any alcohol. But yeah, definitely cannot check that box. Going back to the habit tracking, exercise was an other habit that I am supposed to track. I was doing some kind of an exercise, yoga, dance, running, hiking on 17 days out of 30 this month, which is pretty low for me. And for this reason, the next goal, which is to move five days in a week, can also not be checked, which I can normally reach. But this month I was unable to. Of course, during my holiday, I was not really um, exercising that much outside of that little swimming that I did every day and outside of all the walking that we did in the cities that we visited. The next habit that I'm tracking, or it's not a habit actually, but it's an occurrence, 
and that is my headaches because I am a girl with quite a lot of headaches usually and this month I am happy to report I only had one day of a headache but that was pretty quickly coming. It was a bit strange for me because usually my headaches are staying for two, three days, but this was like suddenly coming after my morning run and it was quite sharp. So I took a pill and then it was gone. So one day, which is perfect. I think this is my lowest this year in one month of headaches. The next one is having social media free days. So when I was on my holiday on that Friday, I didn't do my social media free day because I was like posting on Instagram from my holiday. But overall, I still did four days this month of social media free days. There was one week when I somehow messed it up and on the Friday I was already on social media when I realized it's Friday and I'm not supposed to be on social media but then I took the Saturday the next day as my social media free day for that week so I can be a bit flexible I target Friday as my social media free day but if it doesn't happen then I choose another day I anyway did four days as I mentioned so that's great I can check that box uh, among my goals and I added actually one more habit to be tracked which is meditation I started last month with a program I, well I did the free trial um, in August and beginning of September of an online tool which I really liked but it's quite pricey so at the moment I have not um, registered for a subscription I have not paid for it yet but I, I am trying to incorporate some meditation into my routine. With that application, it was much easier because then I just press in the app to the next meditation, whatever is coming up. Um, and then I just listen to it and I do this guided meditation for 10 minutes. However, now that I don't have that app, I have to look for it. So it's a bit more difficult to find a correct meditation for myself because there are like... Even on the podcast app, there are not so many good, short guided meditations and most of them are sleep meditations and that's not what I want. I want just a normal guided meditation. So I was also trying YouTube, but the thing is, it's just that I have to search for one, which is not ideal. Um, so I am considering to make some budget for this other meditation app instead but for now haven't committed to that anyway this month i meditated on 13 days out of 30 and i am hoping to get that up to five days a week at first and then maybe every day later on if i had the app then every day wouldn't be a problem to be honest because then it reminds you it brings you a topic to think about and so on so it's it's a very good very nice app actually and then there was one last goal monthly goal in my health and wellness goals which is therapy session at least once a month and i definitely did that this month i did three or four sessions so now i'm doing it once a week actually uh, except when i'm traveling then i'm not <laughs> Then um, let's just quickly move to the personal and business and YouTube related things which are not monthly goals but rather annual goals and then let's just touch on them. Uh, the first one uh, among my personal goals is the reading of 40 books this year which I adjusted from 20 to 40 when I reached 20 in July. I am at the moment at 26 so I'm pretty sure that 40 is a bit ambitious. Uh, that would mean that I would have to read more than four books a month uh, every month in the upcoming three months which might not be realistic with everything else that I'm doing and everything else that I want to do so um, anyway I'm gonna keep it and for now I have as I mentioned 26 in the month of September I, uh, I finished three books I finished The Culture Map from Erin Mayer this was the book that we were reading for the book club, which is going to be this afternoon. Um, we have an online Zoom call with a few people who also read this book and we are going to discuss 
the book. I also read Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. This book is a bit outdated, so I would not recommend anyone to read it anymore. Um, I got it from a friend who decluttered it from her bookshelf and I wanted to read on my holiday an easy chick flick, some fun read, and then I thought that this was it, but it turned out that this is actually a self-help, self-development book. It's not a bad book. It's It can be helpful for for many people. Even for me, there were certain things that were helpful. So it was an easy read, some helpful advice, <laughs> but then I learned some crazy things about well, not about her necessarily, but she talks about relationships and how she and her partner saved their marriage and how their partnership and yeah, their marriage is so great and their sex life is so good. And then I read as I googled her that they actually separated a few years after she wrote this book. So, okay, I don't know what went wrong there. And he even passed away after that in drug abuse. So yikes anyway <laughs> i didn't know that when i read the book i checked it afterwards and then the third book that i finished was this book which is a collection of short stories they are all based in dublin that's why the, well I, or i guess dublin 4 the area of dublin um they are from i would say 70s 80s era the stories um they didn't really capture me very much i didn't really understand the point of some of the short stories, but there is one YouTuber that I watch who is a booktuber and she really likes these kind of short story collections and she was recommending them on her channel, so I thought I'm gonna give it a try, but I didn't really enjoy it. Uh, but I still finished it and it was quite a short, easy read that I could finish quite quickly so that I can get my book count up. This was another book that I got from a friend who decluttered it from her shelf. And yeah, I think I'm gonna declutter it from mine now and bring it to a free bookshelf where someone else can pick it up. So that was the, the three books and that is my current status regarding the 40 books. As for the next goal, the relationship goal and the renovation project, I'm not going to update you on those at the moment. I mean, there is no renovation project done yet, for sure. And I'm <laughs> I'm doubting it at the moment, if it's, if it's actually going to happen this year or not. Let's move on to the business and YouTube goals. Um, upload one video per week. This is going well. Um, I already had some anxiety around this, but it is much easier and much more chilled than doing two videos that I was trying to achieve before because that was too too stressful for me. Um, being more strategic, well, I haven't really put that much effort in it other than the consistency of one video per week. So this is still something that I need to start focusing on and I am determined that in October I will get into this more. Reaching 1,000 subscribers, the speed with which I gain new subscribers uh, has sped up a little bit this last month. I got 20 new subscribers in the month of September compared to like one or two in the previous months. I mean, for a couple of months, like three, four months, I really barely gained any new subscribers. I wonder what was that about and now suddenly... It started to grow again, which I'm very grateful for, but I'm still very far from 1000. Start an Instagram account for my channel. Okay, may, I'm still thinking about how I'm gonna do this all. Like business strategy and the YouTube channel and also my new business idea that I have and how it is all going to work out. If it's gonna be connected to each other, if it's gonna be two independent things yet to be determined and then figure out where my career is going. I'm definitely on, on the track with this one. I had some conversations with people and I am kind of working on this at the moment quite actively. So this is at least on track. I haven't reached this goal. Definitely I cannot check this box, but I'm definitely working on it. 
So yeah, that was the review of my goals for the month of September and how I was proceeding with my annual and monthly goals. So now that we reviewed the goals, it's time to move on to my monthly budget and the review of the budget. Normally, we separate this into three sections, talking about the fixed costs first and the variable costs and then the sinking funds. So let's jump right in. My first item on the list of fixed costs is my rent, which hasn't changed. It is still 574.84 in August. Um, I paid a little bit lower because there were some costs associated with me living here where I got some money back basically. So that is why I didn't have to pay the full amount, but a lower amount. But from September onwards, I'm back to the full amount. Um, this month I had to pay my annual house insurance, which is 178.92, quite expensive, and it goes up more than 10 euros every year in the last three years, which I think it's quite crazy. And I was suggesting to my landlord, I wanted to ask for a new quote for an insurance because I found it quite expensive. It went from 130 when I first moved here to 180 now. But they they were quite reluctant. They didn't want to make a change because they suggested or they said that they have a bundle of different insurances all together at the same company and they wouldn't want to take out this one insurance from that bundle, which kind of sucks because I know from experience that if you contract a new insurance, it can get much cheaper. This is a bit unfair but I guess I will just have to move out from here to get rid of this high insurance cost. I didn't have to pay for heating or electricity this month but I did have to pay for my internet and mobile subscriptions which was 72 euros and 18 cents altogether and I have in this category a little bit of a minus balance due to this unforeseen or forgotten expense which happens every year this like extra 50 euros that I have to pay but I'm slowly but surely cutting down on that minus because as I as you can see I allocate 78 euros every month but I pay less than that every month um, out so this balance will slowly uh, go down from minus 28 to zero hopefully by the end of the year or closer to the end of the year and then at the end of December I will do a whole budget review and recap and reset. Then my subscriptions are around 18 euros a little bit below that and I have a little bit of a balance here because for half a year I haven't paid for Netflix so that 32 euros and 38 cents is more or less from that break from paying for Netflix but I'm back now for paying for Spotify, Netflix, YouTube Premium and also Google Photos storage. <laughs> so that's 17 euros and 69 cents. Charity I pay once a year, so at the moment it's just the balance is going up because I allocate every month 5 euros, but I don't have a payout until March. Retirement savings, uh, same thing, once a year, it's going to be in December, so I'm just collecting until the end of the year and then there will be one payout where I spend this total sum that I collect throughout the year. So it's kind of a sinking fund in this sense. Health insurance, I paid it in August. So in September, October, I won't pay. And then in November, I pay again every three months. Uh, so the balance for now is one of 48.29. And then I will keep allocating 146 euros in the next month to be able to pay the 436 euros at the end of November or by the end of November. Bond costs, it was the end of the third quarter, by, with the end of September, so I had to pay my uh, bank costs, which went up from the second half of the year. So now I paid 17 euros and 69 cents. I still have a 10 euro balance after paying that. So for the next three months, the last three months of the year, I will lower my bank cost fixed cost to 3.5 actually because I already have the 10 euros from it so I can save very little but still a little bit of money there. Alright so that was the total 
fixed cost, which is 861 euros and 32 cents for the month of September. And I only have one category in which I have a minus, which is a good, good feeling. Let's move on to the variable costs. My dining out and takeout budget, um, I still kept it at 170 because I had quite a minus in this due to my spending in uh, June and July. However, in August and September, I definitely caught up on some of this minus that I had because I spent way less than what I allocated for this month. Uh, I spent less than 90 euros in September, which is great. Uh, and I'm hoping to keep it this way in the next three months so that this um, minus 32 euros will go down. I can probably lower my 170 to 150 for the next three months since I am pretty confident that I will be able to catch up on this. Groceries, uh, this 200 euro budget seems to be um, very good because I am approaching quite closely to that every month. I have spent 193 euros and 82 cents this month on my groceries and I have an overflow of, nine, of almost 60 euros in this budget category, which will be very nice uh, to have available some of this extra budget in December when the Christmas period is coming and when I when we have some celebrations and we need to buy some more food and have guests over. Then the gift category I didn't spend any in this category in the month of September, which meant that I could catch up on some of the minus that I had and now I am back into plus in this category, plus 13 euros. That's not a lot, but at least it's not in a negative. Car budget, I also didn't spend any on the car and since I allocate 10 euros per month now I have 91 euros and 50 cents which will be great um, at the end of the year when I have to buy my annual highway toll thing, ticket, whatever it's called. And then moving onwards to the pass fare which I can really just change it to public transport at this point because I almost never use taxi, at least not when I'm here at home in Vienna. When I travel, I do use sometimes taxi or Uber, but that goes from my travel budget anyways. So the public transport spending this month was the same as last month, 9.6 euros, which means I use public transport on two days, each day, one way there, one way back. That brings me a total of almost 50 euros overflow, which will be very useful when the colder months are coming in now from October onwards, when I will need public transport more than when the weather is good and when I can go everywhere by bike or almost everywhere. <laughs> I mean, if it's close enough, there is a certain threshold for me until which I am willing to go by, car by bike. And then after that, uh, I take public transport to anywhere which is further than my treasure. Let's move on to the clothing. I spent 37 euros and 48 cents on clothing this month and my overflow or my rollover in this budget category is 35 euros at the moment, allocating 50 euros per month. So now I'm like at the edge, basically. I cannot really purchase any big ticket items uh, in this category anymore. Medical, this includes my um, therapy and so I spent 93 euros this month, uh, basically that is three therapy sessions and I have an overflow of 215 euros because I was allocating the same amount of money throughout the year, this 80 euros, but I was not doing therapy for a few months in between. So I didn't use the money and it accumulated, but now I'm working on lowering this positive balance for sure. Self-care, well, this is my um, worst budget category when it comes to uh, being in a minus, not only because this is the highest amount of negative balance that I have in any of my categories, but also because I don't see it going down in the next month, October, coming up and I will have actually a high spending month in this category because the um, 
that sale event that happens every six months is coming up where I can get makeup and skincare and hygiene items for a discounted price. And I am actually running out of quite a lot of things at the moment. I don't know how does this work that I just keep running out of things all the time, but I definitely need to replace a lot of things. So I already have a list and I'm preparing myself for a big shopping day. <laughs> so this month also I spent over budget anyway, so my minus is now 56 euros and this month this will definitely not get lower, rather bigger. Let's see if in November and December I can catch up on some of that once I have stacked up on everything I need in October. Furniture budget, I didn't spend anything here and my rollover is 820 euros since I put in every month 50 euros in this budget category. Supplies and maintenance, we are at um, 219 euros and 80 cents overflow. This month was a high spending month in this category. Quite unusual, almost 50 euros. I got a few things for the apartment, also cleaning supplies, but also like a few things. I'm not even sure. <laughs> I'm having a brain freeze right now. I cannot tell you what I got, but yeah, mostly probably just cleaning and maintenance stuff. And of course my laundry is included in here. Investment accounts, the usual hundred euros for my investment account plus three euros, which is something different. I will talk about that maybe in an upcoming video. Um, but I definitely have a rollover in this budget category because at some point I was dedicating 300 euros a month to this category, but I was not investing 300, only 100, and I am keeping it at 100 for now because my investments are actually not doing so well, so I don't trust myself putting more into investments when they are not doing well. I, I would just lose more money, so I guess I'm not the best at investing. At least not at the moment, at least with not this market <laughs> that is happening right now. Anyway, let's move on to the sport category. I spent over budget here, 85 euros, and I only have 5 euros and 70 cents overflow. So I might have to reconsider these 70 euros per month for the next month if I want to do my clubs as well as my salsa classes. We shall see how this will go. Maybe I will do one more month with 70 and then if I go into negative in the total balance, then I will adjust it from November. Business, I spent 25 euros and 42 cents in this category and I have an overflow of 676 euros and 34 cents. And then I was considering my upcoming business expenses, which will be definitely one bigger accounting bill of almost 300 euros and then some just smaller expenses. So I decided that for the next few months, next three months, I will go back to my 200 euro budget in the business for three months since, was it? Yeah, for a couple of months, three or four months, I changed it to 500 because I had some bigger expenses, but now I'm confident to change it back because now I have a an overflow in this budget category. Travel and security fund are two that I'm not mentioning to keep a little bit of mystery here. And the blow money, I was right within budget with my blow money uh, spending, which was 19 euros and 52 cents. And I have an overflow of 163 euros and 93 cents. So overall, I spent only 700 and 38 euros and 31 cents this month, uh, which means my total spending was 1,599, which is pretty low all, all together in the grand scheme of things. If we look at the total, the whole year, this was on the lower side, probably my third or fourth lowest spending this year, which gives me a bit of confidence. <laughs> going into the next month. But as we know, this is fluctuating every month because depending on the fixed costs, uh, which fixed costs come in, in certain months that I have to pay, this fluctuates quite a bit between 2,200 and 1,300, like from 1,300 to 2,200, my total costs can vary quite a bit between months. 
Finally, let's quickly chat about the sinking funds. Um, currently, I am working mostly on the Christmas sinking fund. I allocated 35 euros into that fund, and then I realized that I have 40, 442 euros and 76 cents accumulated, but my goal was to reach 600 euros, which means my 35 euro per month will not be enough. So I raised this monthly or from next month, I will raise this monthly contribution to 55 euros. And then this month I had a little bit of extra cash or a little bit of extra money to allocate. So I just allocated to the MacBook category because I was, when I first checked the MacBook that I wanted to buy and how much it's gonna cost. And when, when I first set this 2200 as, as a budget for my MacBook that I want to buy, that was like, almost a year ago and of course prices are going up so I'm not confident that this would cover my MacBook that I am hopefully going to purchase in October and so I allocated that small amount of extra that I had but in the other categories I didn't allocate anything in the month of September so yeah that was my budget and then now finally quickly talk about the in and out balance this month was quite a balanced in and out um, scale let's say this is my in this is my out so let's talk about the in first i got a new pyjama set i wanted to replace one of my pyjama sets my summer short sleeve shorts uh, pyjama set because it was old and i didn't like it anymore and it was quite used as well um, so i got a new one and i decluttered the old one i also got in the supermarket in Eurospar, they have Chibo as well. They sell the brand Chibo and they have certain items from there, them. And they had a sale like 50% off on certain things. Not on the pyjama, unfortunately, but they had some training bands uh, for training at home that I was thinking of buying already before because sometimes when I put in a training video on YouTube and then they tell you that you need something for it and then sometimes I don't have these training bands so I got those they were like six euros or something like that at the same shopping spree I also got some silicone tops for dishes that you can put on like little cups or bowls when you have something in it and you want to store it in the fridge so I got that as well it was also around eight euros um, I also needed some new underwear because I decluttered quite a few last month, which were very old. These are yeah, just like these everyday comfortable shorts uh, underwear. And so I went to H&M and I got a pack of seven uh, for 10 euros. So I think that was a very good uh, price value ratio. I don't usually purchase anything in H&M because I try to avoid fast fashion, but for underwear, I found it is quite good. So I used to buy all my underwear basically from H&M before. And now, yeah, I figured for this kind of um, underwear, uh, that is the best place to go. I also got from Zara a spray bottle because I make my own cleaning product for like all purpose surface cleaning for which I was using a plastic bottle that I reused from a product that I, that I finished before, but I wanted to have a nice bottle that I can put on my, on the countertop in the, in the kitchen and it looks nice. So I got that. I got a, for winter, I'm already preparing, I got a pair of flip-flops or what do you call these, like fuzzy um, flip-flops that are warm and cozy for the winter at home. I got a pair of that. Um, I got two storage boxes secondhand, which fit under my bed so that I can store uh, my travel stuff in them or like some stuff for which are out of season. I got them secondhand, but they are brand new in the packaging, original packaging. Um, compared to the new price, I got them half price, so that was a good deal. 
I got some kitchen tongs, but actually I already got them in August, but I think I didn't include that in my August in balance, so that's why I'm mentioning it now. I got some rechargeable batteries this month because I always need some small 3A batteries for my light, for my bike and for other little gadgets, so it's good to have some extras. I got also two books. Um, <laughs> I paid a total of one euro for the two books. Um, this one from Robert Ludlum, The Burn Supremacy. This is a book that was made into a um, movie or a series actually of movies, like three, I think it's three, epi three episodes. I got this for free. I picked it up from the bookshelf next door, the free bookshelves, but I guess I would need to get the other three uh, or other two books to be able to read it and um, this is not the first book out of the three so yeah for now i will just keep an eye out if i can get these second hand and then i will read them if not i will bring up bring it back and then i got another book which is the seven years in tibet from henry Carrer. and when i first watched the movie with Brad Pitt, the Seven Years in Tibet movie, I really wanted to buy the book in original because the Henry Carrer, who is the writer and also who who is the like the main character of the movie, he um, he was Austrian. So I really wanted to buy the book here in Austria second hand, like in an or in the original language, which I finally did. It was one euro because it was on a sale they had a 50% off at the second hand store where I bought this but um, I mean this is not the version that I would ideally like I would like a more older edition this is an edition which came out after the movie so it has like a photo from the scene of the movie with Brad Pitt <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, I wanted the book, so for one euro I don't mind getting it in this edition, but I really would like to get my hand on an older edition at some point. But this was the first time I could find it, because every time I go to that bookstore, I check the letter age for this book, and I never found it until last time when I went to that store. <laughs> so finally I could get it. And then I had to replace my laptop charger, so that my old charger is out, my new charger is in, which is a bit of an unfortunate uh, case because I'm buying a new laptop, so I could have spared that expense of replacing my laptop charger, but my laptop charger just broke and I needed a laptop, so I couldn't charge it in any other way. And then I got a few things from um, the, drug, the druggery store, like my hygiene products, some cotton rounds, which I buy like once every two or three years because I only use it to remove my nail polish, which I don't use that often. I got a uh, new night cream because I also finished one, so that was kind of a replacement. I also got a new sunscreen for my face before we went on the holiday because I was afraid that my current sunscreen would run out uh, and it actually is running out, it hasn't run out completely yet, but I think I'm at the last, like I will use it once and then it will, go, and it will be done. And then here is my little out box of the hygiene and clean, uh, hygiene and makeup and skincare products. I finished yesterday this um, cleanser, um, what do you call it, this contact lens cleanser. This was my um, night cream. This was a BB cream. I finished this powder as well. Um, it lasted me less than six months, which is a bummer, but now I'm doing this for exactly this purpose so that I know when something moves in and when something runs out, so that I know how long each item can last for me. I also finished the vitamin C serum and I also finished the niacinamide serum this month. So these are going to the trash now, <laughs> to recycling. And that was it for today's video. Um, is there anything in the out balance that I didn't mention? Yeah, so we did, um, <laughs> if you haven't seen, I did a color analysis and I made a video out of it. And when the stylist was here, we also looked at my wardrobe and some of my clothes and we decluttered a few of them. 
So I got rid of a pair of pants, a white vest, another pair of pants and a dress. Then the laptop charger, I also just got rid of a cap because I, I kept it because I thought I was going to use it one day, but I haven't used it in years, so it's time for it to go. And then, yeah, the products that I just showed you and of course the pyjama that I mentioned already. That was it. And this was today's October reset video or a reset video for the month of October. Now I am going to focus on my next month and starting fresh. Thank you for tagging along. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to watch my other videos. I have a lot of travel content and vlogs from Vienna as well as like organizing, cooking, decluttering videos. So I'm sure you will find something you will like. Check out my channel and I hope to see you at my next video. Until then, goodbye.